Good morning guys, it's a beautiful day in the Pacific Northwest and in this video I'm going to finish up doing some of the garden beds that we started and we've got a laundry list of chores to get done before the rain comes in. we got about 10 days of rain coming and this is going to be our last sunny day so I'm going to try to get these garden beds finished. I'm going to get some work done down in the barn which is going to be pretty exciting. Just got to finish up the trailer doors and then the trailer will be all done. So hopefully we can get all that stuff knocked out and we'll be looking pretty good. For kidding. So here's how far I got on the last beds. We put some cardboard down in there to, to kill the grass and then we're also going to put some hardware cloth in the bottom and I staple that to the wood. That way if moles try to dig up through they hit the hardware cloth and then can't get up into our garden beds. So it's worked out really well on those garden beds. We haven't had any mole activity over there. Uh, we do get quite a quite a few mole hills so but none in the garden so so that's been nice i'm gonna go ahead and finish up working on this bed very important when you're doing the tracing uh, along the ground that you actually get it level because if you don't when you when you trace along the ground and you flip it over to put it on it won't be straight right here it'll be crooked right here so we're gonna get started on this one and i'll show you how i measure and cut to keep it angled for the ground so the first thing that I do is I set up the board. So I've got this frame completely level and I set up the board that's going to fill the gap on the ground next to the frame like this. I line up the edge of the board with the edge of the frame. I'm going to trace the inside of that board with a pencil, with a Pika Dry pencil, which is like my favorite pencil ever. No sponsor, but really cool pencil. And I'll prop this, I'll prop this up just a hair to eliminate that little gap that I had. And then that gap, that way the gap is on the ground and not in between the, so we'll do. Okay, so just like that right there. And now all we have to do is just do this. All the way down. And then you're going to cut it. You're going to cut that line. This is the piece that you're going to save. So you're going to flip that piece over and the flat side is going to go against your board and the other side is going to go against the ground. I'll put a mark on it just to make sure like, you know, I'll put inside. So this is inside. And then that way I know which way it needs to go. Because it gets kind of confusing sometimes. Okay, so now that you got to cut this is the piece that we were going to save, right? Because we flipped it over. And this piece should, if we did everything correctly, should slide right in, right down here. Like this. As long as your beds are level, as long as your beds are level up here, when you cut that, that'll be straight right here when you flip it over. What do you think, Gertie? You gonna eat lots of the leaves? The goats will always reach over and steal, so we gotta make sure that we always plant goat-friendly vegetables towards the edges because the goats always sneak in and get some off the fence line. So we're very mindful of what we plant near the fence line to make sure that we don't plant anything that's poisonous to goats or that can make them sick. The sun has gone away and it looks like the rain clouds are coming in, so I've been trying to hurry and kind of get done. but. This is what I've got so far. This one is complete. We just have to put the cardboard and the hardware cloth in the bottom. I did put a spreader here because this one's 12 feet long. This one's three foot by 12 foot. And we found that the three foot wide is the way to go. It's just easier to reach. The two foot's a little small. The four foot's a little big. Three foot is perfect. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a panel between each post across so that anything we plant that grows up we'll plant in the back side and it can grow up the panel on the back and i might put like a nice top on there um it just might it might look pretty cool over here we're going to do the same thing whereas this is how tall the panel is so it's going to go from there over straight across to here 
and then I'll put one more in the corner there and it'll go from here over to here and then that'll be pretty much it we're thinking we might do like a nice little garden trellis or something kind of like what we did over here with the with the hoop we'll do something across there that we can grow something from bed to bed so that's what I got so far and uh, if you guys are looking to build some garden beds on sloped ground I hope that little trick helps you guys out it's like I said it's not perfect I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it or not but that's what worked for us and it came out pretty good you can see over here it just kind of follows the contour of the ground so a bunch of our dirt doesn't spill out and we don't have to dig into the ground because that's very labor intensive and those ones over there have held up really well all right we're getting the last of the ship lap up we we so i have to listen to this machine already think you have enough to finish this side i hope so i won't have enough to do the corner oh. should have enough to get this side okay. this is the kidding stall side and I am cleaning the kitchenette. It's all clean. Restock the treats. Everything's ready to go for milking time. Oh man, you guys, the trailer is getting really close to completion. Uh, if you've been watching and following along, I've been outfitting our trailer so that we can take more goats to the show. I did like a two level system in there. And uh, I'll just show you guys, I'm waiting on a, a few things. I got the door and the latch system figured out finally. So this is how we're gonna do it. Right here, we'll have a little pull latch. This pulls out and then all of the bolts and everything are hidden underneath of this piece. And then I put a little stopper down at the bottom, so when you go to close it, you just open that, it's locked in. It's really, really simple, really easy. Locks in really, really tight. It's, uh, it's not bad. And then we can also, you can open this up, like that, move it over to this side, and I gotta fix this a little bit. So I made a indentation there, so that we could do that. And then we can put the goats, basically, this whole bottom area and have two separations. I'm going to do another one over here so that that door will stay over there. And so we could have two divided areas like that. I mean, might even put another door right here and then we could have three divided areas. So, but for now, we're just going to do it like this and I've got the upper door done. I'm waiting on some parts for the upper door, uh, but this door right here is completely finished. This is how it's going to, this is how it's going to look and how it's going to work. I'm really excited to be almost done with the trailer. Got uh, quite a few hours on this build and I hope that it comes out, you know, works well for us. And we're going to take it on a test drive just to make sure that everything, I'm going to put a camera back here and take it on a test drive and make sure everything stays in place and nothing, you know, moves or shakes when we're driving down the road. Make sure everything's safe for the goats. That's the, the highest priority is making sure everything is safe making sure everything's gonna function and, um, you know, just make sure everything's good for the goaties. Okay, we're gathering compost from our goat. This is where we dump our goat clean out. And it's got tons of worms in it and it's really good for your garden. So we are using our resources, getting this up to the garden beds. These worms need live organic material for your garden and you can use goat poop straight too it doesn't burn your plants goat and rabbit poop you can use straight right yeah and we've basically we've just got to go get a truckload of soil we're gonna fill the bottom of our these beds with all of our compost and then we'll top it off with a, a truckload of soil and then we'll, we'll finish doing the infield here with uh, some wood chips so that everything stays nice and Nice and weed free. Oh, oh show these. These are 
spare root asparagus plants. So we're going to plant these, four of them, and they'll come back every year. Wow, that's cool. Do you want the dirt in now? Or? Fresheners, Fawn, and Molly, and they're still pretty jumpy. Yeah, I feel like we've made really good progress with Molly. Fawn still needs a little work, but Molly's, yeah, Molly's gotten a lot better. But Fawn needs a little more work. She's better, she's not completely squatting on the ground. So hopefully, by the time they kid, we'll have all the kinks worked out of Fawny. Jumping right when you touch them, so just keep doing it. That's way better than it was. I mean, she was squatting all the way down, so and Molly would dance and jump all over the place. So I think okay. that's progress. Hi, guys. Any guesses on what you think this might be? It's something new that I'm adding to our milk processing procedures so take a guess down below what you think this might be and in the next video we will tell you it's really cool though <laughs> it's a new treat jar Okay, looks like we have a square tangle. <laughs> this is the only level I have because my other ones at work. So we're gonna make do with this. That, this is Jace's tools. <laughs> These are, there's a few of Jace's tools in here. That's okay though. Okay, 